Dun, 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 Uncle L here. And every time I say largemouth bass, a kitty dies somewhere. Blah. Anyway, we're going to go over jigging for largemouth. I don't know. This might apply for smallmouth. Springtime is probably your best chance. Uh, I was over at my local uh, fishing hole. And I seen all the bait casters zipping their spinner baits and everything else. Uh, to no avail. They just went too big. And I think everything, maybe about a week more than maybe some of the larger species will come in. So, I forgot a story on the largemouth side of the game. My buddy, he has a uridium, titanium, tyrillium, I don't know, some kind of alien space material reel then he has the matching four hundred dollar pole with it so under a thousand dollars i would say and uh he had a spro hair jig and if you know spro they only come in three four five inch monster jigs so he birds nests it and then he was pissed off so Less than two feet from shore, he drops it right next to a rock. Whoosh. All of a sudden, boom, boom. Whoosh. Large mouth was sitting there, two pounds. <laughs> and he got lucky the hook set. So, bird nested and he pulled it in. And then he went on a long dry spell. So, again, you got to learn the contours of the bottom of the thing. So you know there's a flat area, right here's the bush. So we'll pretend this is a bush or a rock. I work all the areas around the bush and then see on the back side of the shady rocks, depending where the sun is, I like going in there. And so with the cane pole, what happened this week was I was vertical jigging around this area. So here's the top view, and uh, over here was some branches. And so after you go over this area, just cast in one area, learn the lay of the land, you sort of get the snag. So there was a branch over here, and so it felt like a branch. Well, anyway, the large mouth, he was about a pound, was sitting in here. And this is less than a, a half a foot. But it's just a deep pocket right here. And I dropped it. And he didn't even make a ripple. And so I pull it up and it's dead weight. And I'm like, is there? It felt like a tree branch. All of a sudden, I see his back popping out of the water when I. And then by that time, he kicked the hook, spit the hook, and then he was gone. But yeah, work all the bushes areas. So this, I would drop right here, drop right here, drop right here. Or, I would swim it along and then just come through here. And then just go around. Then every once in a while I would stop. But right here was the crappie and one largemouth. So, again, that gets you... This little cane pole experiment. Make... Make sure you keep it vertical so that, and uh, you work the shadow areas. So if you're casting, you're casting along and then you're figuring out the bottom so you know what's what. So after about four or five times, I know there's rock, it bumps the rock, and then the jig keeps moving, then it hits smoother surfaces. So the cane pull works in a pendulum so either you put it down and then it swings and stops in the middle or you can drag it steady or you can vertical jig it and this is probably an ultralight setup and see it in parts even if you hold it still their natural body shakes so again, there's concrete. This is within the foot, the foot of the thing. You got concrete slabs in this area, 
and work under there because either something's hiding under there generally and that's just going angling down a foot from the shore work all the areas Man, five minutes already we got part two so uncle l preaches you have a medium action pole and all I had was an ultralight. So the ultralight tip, see how it just got tension on the line and it's already bent? It is no bueno. But we used tight an Uncle L jig. Whoops. So that's pretty ugly. And then we put some uh, crappy niblets in here. But that's just glowing the dark tail. I think this is 1 16th. 1 16th is probably the smallest I would go. 1 64th, they're pretty tricky and they like to spit that hook. But medium action pole. And I cast, uh, standing on the edge of the dock here, less than 4 3 feet away. There's cattails, rocks, surfaces. I kept casting in this one area. And I kept feeling something. And with the ultralight, you had to keep the line tight. So you cast it out and let it drop. So it drops. But you had to keep the line tight and manage it without, how would you say, bringing it in. So you want to keep tension on that line at all times. It's hard to explain your line you drop it but you don't want to reel it in you want to let it hit the bottom but still tighten it up enough to keep that line in there well after a few casts I kept bumping a tr tree branch that was submerged or I don't know what it was could have been a rock and I kept bumping the rock or the tree branch so I go huh that's unusual and I had a weird tug so and then it snagged up and I was like crap what the hell is that so I kept casting letting it fall and then keeping the tension on it all of a sudden wham and you almost you want to do the hard bass tournament set where you pranking it but you just sort of want to reel two to three times and keep that tension on it and then set the hook the hardest thing to ever learn wipers are that way but less than one and a half, two feet, cast along the shore, try to find the bottom, hit some rocks, hit some structure. But the fishy was sleeping in there somewhere. And after about 10 casts, I try another area. Usually they get bored of the jig and then they just ignore you. Or you have to change up color. But cast, keep the tension on. Let it drop, and then wham! When, right when you feel something different, it's hard. You have to keep that real, 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 and then set the hook. It's just crazy. Well, we spoke too much about largemouth bass this week. Uh, I don't know. They're just interesting. And again, they just have like a tink, 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 tink. Some of the juveniles will go crazy. Like the, maybe like the five inch ones. I've been catching a lot of those. They'll just nail it. Or they'll hit it like two or three times. The larger the larger the mouth, or the larger or the visor they get, they just, one time, and you just feel either a slight tug, or just a pink, and then they're gone. So that's why that medium action's crucial. Not saying an ultralight can't do it, but if you want to have high success, medium action, Uncle L's out.